In this lecture, let us discuss about black box testing, which is a type of software testing in which the tester is not concerned with the software's internal knowledge or implementation details, but rather he just focuses on validating the functionality based on the provided requirements or specifications. So your tester will just evaluate the functionality of an application without any knowledge of its internal code or structure. So here instead of focusing on how the software works internally, so working process not required, he doesn't focus on that, but rather he'll just focus on examining the software outputs based on the set of inputs. So here uh, these three are the main objectives. The first is a functionality testing, then uh, he'll check for the, uh, he'll go for the requirement verification. So whether all the requirements provided by the client are included or not, and then user experience. Coming to the types of uh, black box testing. So we have three types. First one is a functional testing. So here, functional testing, uh, we can define it as a type of testing that verifies that each function of the software application works in conformance with the requirement and specification. So here, it, this functional testing, it validates the functionality against its specified requirements. So this is this testing is not concerned with the source code of the application. So each functionality of the software application is tested by providing appropriate test input, expecting the output and comparing the actual output with the expected, expected output. So this functional testing, it concentrates on verifying that the application's features and functions, they are working correctly or not. This testing, it all uh, it focus on checking the user interface like uh, or else APIs, database security, etc. So functional testing, again, it can be either a manual testing or automated. So it determines the system software functional requirements. Second one is non-functional testing, which is a software testing technique that checks the non-functional attributes of a system. And this is mainly designed to test the readiness of a system as per non-functional parameters, uh, parameters which were not discussed or addressed by the functional testing. So uh, it mainly focus on uh, software performance or uh, usability, readability, and uh, all other quality attributes which are not directly related to functional requirements or which are not addressed by the functional testing. And the third one is regression testing. It is a process of testing the modified parts of the code and the parts that might get affected due to modifications to ensure that no new errors have been introduced in the software after the modifications have been made. So here modification can be anything, right? Like you can see, it can be a bug fix or enhancement or ad addition of any new feature to the existing functionality. So after making those changes or if you make any updates to the application, then those changes should not affect the existing functionality, right? So they should not introduce new defects into the existing functionality or into the previously working parts of the software. So that will be taken care during the regression testing process. In fact, we can say that this regression means return of something. And in software field, we can say that it refers to the return of a bug. So this regression testing ensures that the newly added code is compatible with the existing code without creating any problem or without affecting the existing functionality. Coming to the techniques used in black box testing, first one is equivalence partitioning. It uh, mainly divides the input data into equivalent partitions where the software behaves similarly. So this actually helps to reduce the number of test cases by selecting one respective from each partition. So we'll discuss all these techniques in detail uh, in next video. So here I'm just giving you a brief uh, description about the techniques. Then coming to the boundary value, it tests the boundaries between the partitions. Because uh, errors often they occur at the edges of the input ranges. So it includes the values just below 
or uh, just above the boundaries. So this boundary value analysis is used to test those boundaries between the partitions. Then coming to the third one, decision table testing. It uses a table to represent combination of inputs as well as their corresponding output. So which ensures that all possible scenarios they are covered, especially when dealing with multiple conditions. Then we have uh, state transition testing. It mainly focus on the transitions between different states in the application. So this technique is particularly useful for applications uh, with complex state dependent behavior. Then we have error guessing. Uh, it mainly relies on the testers experience and intuition to identify potential error prone areas of the application and the design tests to exploit those weaknesses so these are few important techniques in black box still we have few more like use case testing exploratory testing etc and the tools used in black box testing are so if, if we take this test case management tools we have examples like QTest, which is a test management tool that supports agile testing and integrates with various development and testing tools then we have test trail uh, again a web-based test case management tool that allows teams to create manage and organize test cases as well as track the testing progress as well then we have z fire which provides a suite of tools for test management including uh, integration with other testing tools and reporting features then we have automated testing tools like selenium uh, it is a more widely used framework for automating web applications which supports various browsers and programming languages. Then Cypress, an end-to-end -end, uh, testing framework uh, which is specially designed for modern web applications which allows for easy integration and quick test writing. Then uh, Test Complete, so which is a commercial tool that supports automated testing of desktop or web and uh, even mobile applications with a rich set of features. Advantages include, uh, first is a user-centric approach. So this black box testing, uh, it, main, this, it mainly focuses on the user experience and functionality, which ensures that the software meets user needs and requirements. Then uh, unbiased testing. So here, testers have no knowledge of the implementation. Their evaluation is objective, uh, which can lead to the discovery of different types of defects. Next, uh, detects missing functionality. So this testing, it helps identify gaps between actual functionality and specified requirements, ensuring that all features are present and working. Coming to the disadvantages, the first one is limited insight or limited coverage. So this black box testing, it may not cover all possible paths through the application, potentially missing some defects, uh, especially uh, in complex systems. Then dependence on specifications. So this uh, effectiveness, it mainly relies heavily on well-defined requirements and specifications. So ambiguities or gaps, they can lead to incomplete testing also. Next, uh, is it is, is not suitable for all testings because this black box testing this is less effective for certain types of testing such as uh, performance and security testing uh, where an understanding of the internal workings they may be necessary so you can't uh, perform this black box testing in uh, those environments black box testing is less effective for certain types of testing such as performance and security testing where an understanding of the internal working may be necessary